Hello, my name is Lawrence Liu, and I would like to welcome you to today's webinar brought to you by Puff Security and eMemory. Today's webinar will be focused on Puff IoT, the Puff based hardware root of trust for secure supply chain. Just some legal notices to get out of the way first. Here's today's agenda. First, we'll look at the overall design of Puff IoT. Second, we will see what applications are supported by Puff IoT. Third, we'll focus on how Puff IoT can add security to the modern supply chain. Finally, we'll wrap up today's webinar and take your questions as time allows. Now let's begin. We will first start with a quick preview of our Puff-based solutions. Number one, all of our Puff-based solutions are based on the best-in-class hardware root of trust. And by best-in-class, we mean that each component offers the most desirable features, such as a secure OTP memory, high-performance TRNG, the highly stable entropy source that is NeoPuff. Number two, Puff-based solutions offer protections against counterfeiting to prevent cloned items from being sold on the gray market, to protect soft assets through the pairing of the SOC and flash. Number three, our Puff-based solutions are secure through anti-tampering designs and cryptographic algorithms certified by the security analysis company ReSecure and the U.S. government's NIST. Puff-based solutions are designed to resist a variety of attacks, including electron microscope analysis, side channel power analysis, fault injection, and glitch attacks. Number four. Finally, Puff-based solutions increase the security of the supply chain, starting with chip design through infield use all the way to end of life. Puff-based solutions support the three zeros of zero touch key provisioning and onboarding, zero trust protocols using unhackable inborn keys, zeroization to fully destroy secret keys at end of life. Moving on to the next slide. We now take a quick glance at the three Puff-based solutions. Starting on the left, we have PuffRT, the root of trust containing just the essential components of a hardware root of trust, built upon a secure OTP and Puff, protected by anti-tampering protections. PuffRT also contains a TRNG as a source of dynamic entropy and interfaced using the industry standard bus protocol, APB. In the middle is PuffIoT, the secure coprocessor. Using PuffRT as a basis, a suite of crypto engines is added that include key wrapping and derivation, symmetric block cipher, a secure hash engine, elliptic curve public key crypto, a dedicated sequential module eliminates the need for additional software, an AXI or AHB interface with direct memory access is used for high-speed data transfers. Finally, the familiar APB protocol is used for system communications with Puff IoT. And last but not least, we get to Puff SE, the secure element that adds an embedded flash to Puff IoT. Our main focus for this webinar will be on Puff IoT. This slide lists the major features of Puff IoT and how it integrates into a system. First, Puff IoT inherits all of Puff RT's root of trust features, such as its integrated secure OTP storage, TRNG, and Puff. Second, Puff IoT adds cryptographic engines to support more complex protocols for key generation, block ciphers, secure hashes, and authenticated encryption. Third, to lessen a CPU's workload, Puff IoT includes a direct memory access unit for quick access to system memory through the AXI or AHB interface. The APB interface han controller handles the commands and status for Puff IoT. Fourth, all algorithms and protocols of Puff IoT are executed using an embedded sequencer with hardwired microcode. No additional CPU, special OS, or boot code is required for the operation of Puff IoT. Finally, Extendable Enclave allows the expansion of the security boundary to include other external storage units within the same system, such as NOR or NAND flash. The next slide goes into more detail about the features of Puff IoT. We break down Puff IoT into six parts that we will go into further detail. One, 
Puff IoT contains three modules to allow it to interface with the rest of the system. The PITC, using the APB protocol to accept commands and send out system status. The DMA, using the AHB or AXI protocol to directly interface with system memory. The MMU, paired with the DMA for control of system memory. Two, Puff RT is the hardware rooted trust that forms the basis of Puff IoT, which consists of three major parts. Eight kilobits of secure OTP storage. Puff, that the hardware unique key is sourced from. TRNG, that is NIST compliant as an entropy source. Three, the cryptographic engines of Puff IoT public key cryptography supporting elliptic curves from NIST or the Chinese National Standard SM2 or non-elliptic curve RSA. Private key cryptography using AES-256 as well as China's SM4. The secure hashes SHA-2 and SM3. 4. Implemented secure protocols including both cipher and hash-based message authentication codes. Hash-based key derivation. Cipher-based key wrapping. 5. The anti-tampering measures of Puff IoT which have been checked by third-party analysis. 6. The Puff IoT software development kit bundled with firmware and API for the support of secure boot, key management, FIDO device onboard protocols, and more. We will end our overview of Puff IoT with a slide comparing Puff IoT with a solution using discrete components, specifically using a secure coprocessor and discrete OTP unit. Note that an OTP implemented with eFuse is especially vulnerable to data theft if electron microscope analysis is employed. A discrete OTP is only a storage unit. It will not have a secure policy in place to limit unauthorized access. The OTP and coprocessor will rely on an insecure channel unless extra measures to create a special OTP coprocessor bus was taken. Finally, a standard OTP will not have any extra security measures such as anti-tampering features to prevent such attacks like fault injection. Contrasting the above disadvantages with Puff IoT, we notice that Puff IoT's OTP is based on anti-fuse technology, not e-fuses. Puff IoT's interface module already includes a built-in security policy for limiting access. The communication channel between the OTP and the crypto engines is internal to Puff IoT, so that it is automatically protected by the anti-tampering features of Puff IoT. This concludes the general overview of Puff IoT. In the following slides, we will introduce the modern supply chain, its issues, and how Puff IoT can overcome them. Modern supply chains are a ripe target for hackers because their segmented nature spans the globe, making complete oversight a tough task. In this diagram, we see the modern electronic supply chain divided into four stages or phases. Chip design from concept to finished design. Device production, including integration, fabrication, testing, and packaging. Module product assembly to create the finished product. In-field use, where products are deployed to end users for provisioning and configuration. Each segment faces a unique challenge, such as reverse engineering, overproduction, counterfeiting, or hacking. In the next slide, we focus on the issue of counterfeit goods in the supply chain problem that represents a company's lost income when such goods are sold on the gray or black market. Overproduced or cloned chips can leave the official supply chain and enter a parallel counterfeit chain, propagating downstream into finished goods that end up for sale in unauthorized markets. To mitigate the threat of counterfeit products, both overproduction and cloning need to be controlled. An authorization protocol is put into place to differentiate between authentic and overproduced parts. Theft of intellectual property through reverse engineering or other means must be prevented. These issues and more will be examined in upcoming slides. We start at the beginning of the supply chain at the initial stage of a product's life cycle where the decision is made if a hardware unique key needs to be provided for each device and if so, whether internal or external key provisioning will be used. 
The bottom row here shows the traditional external method of key provisioning, using a hardware secure module and secured clean room environment. The top row here shows the internal method of key provisioning, using an onboard puff to generate a unique identifier for each device. The two main benefits of using a puff over traditional key provisioning are on-chip key generation, which means no chance of key leakage during provisioning and the cost savings derived from not having to create and maintain a secured clean room environment for key injection. Moving on to the next stage of the supply chain, overproduced parts from the production stage face the risk of ending up in counterfeit products. One traditional method to combat this problem would be to use an auditing protocol to account for all produced devices by checking for watermarks, fingerprints, or other such identifying silicon features. A PUF-based authorization scheme aims to do away with such centralized auditing by working at the individual chip level. By use, using each device's hardware unique key, a special activation tool creates a unique activation code, AC, for each official chip. Parts without an AC will be considered unauthorized. There are two cases in which a part won't be able to create an AC. One. The PUF has not been activated or enrolled, so there is no HUK. 2. The activation tool has not been used or is not available, so the AC is not created. Once all authentic devices are written with an authorization code, the system can check that the correct AC and HUK pair are both present, so that only systems with authorized parts are allowed to activate, and systems with unauthorized parts are not. Next we move on to the issue of software firmware cloning in the last two stages of the supply chain. Also known as the assembly and infield use stages. The traditional method of protecting the built-in software for an SOC is to use a globally shared key stored in an embedded OTP memory commonly implemented with eFuses to encrypt the soft assets stored in the attached flash. The major weakness with this scheme is that a leak of the global data encryption key will compromise the security of all other chips sharing the same data encryption key. PUF-based solutions protect against this scenario by adding local key protection derived from the PUF. In this way, each attached flash can use its uniquely individual local key to protect the stored soft assets. So even if one local key is compromised, it only affects that single chip and not the entire group of chips sharing the same global key. Wrapping up PUF-based solutions for the modern supply chain, we would like to re-emphasize the following benefits. PUF-derived keys cannot be reverse engineered. Overproduction is controlled through PUF-based activation codes. By controlling overproduction, the amount of counterfeit goods is reduced. The hacking and cloning of assets is limited when protected by PUF-based secure storage. The next slide expands the supply chain diagram to show the entire life cycle of a product. In this slide, we see how Puff IoT plays a role in the entire life cycle of silicon components, from chip probing all the way up to and including end of life. At the chip probing final test stage of silicon production, inborn keys are created using the Puff, saving on costs of key provisioning. At the module assembly stage of a product, the creation of authorization codes for each authentic chip ensures only legally produced parts are activated and assembled into the final product. Before an IoT product can be used in the field, it must go through an onboarding process to ensure that it is able to securely connect and interact with the IoT platform, such as one provided through Azure, Google Cloud, or Amazon Web Services. One such onboarding scheme has been proposed by the FIDO Alliance. To identify each device, the FIDO scheme uses attestation keys that are derived from keying material unique to each device or chip, a job ideally suited for an internal puff. Finally, when a product has reached its end of life stage and needs to be decommissioned, the zeroization operation of Puff IoT guarantees that all important secret keys are destroyed and will no longer be available to use. The next slide shows the successful integration of Puff IoT with one of the most popular hardware platforms today, RISC-V. 
demonstrating two important security operations on a RISC-V evaluation board from Andes Technology. One, Puff-based key provisioning to create a hardware unique key for each installed Puff IoT. Two, paired SOC and firmware secure boot demonstration in which key A and key B are established on two boards, board A and board B. The boot code for each board is encrypted using the key corresponding to that board and written to SPI flash, flash A and flash B. Both board A and board B successfully go through secure boot when the boot flash corresponds to the board, flash A on board A and flash B on board B. However, when the flash is swapped, board A tries to boot with flash B and board B tries to boot with flash A, both boards fail to boot, demonstrating the established pairing between the internal key and SPI flash for each evaluation board. Next, we will revisit the concept of best-in-class hardware root of trust. PuffRT is a root of trust primitive implemented with state-of-the-art technologies to create the best-in-class hardware root of trust that forms all our Puff-based solutions. The Puff is a truly random and stable source of entropy with minimal setup time. The TRNG meets NIST's 90B entropy requirements at high throughput with minimal setup time and ultra low power consumption. The secure OTP storage based on anti-fuse technology is more resistant to reverse engineering than e-fuse technology. In addition, the included entropy sources of Puff IoT are used to implement other security features. One, a Puff derived key obfuscates both data and addresses during OTP access. And two, Entropy from the TRNG is used to randomize the internal operations of the OTP, masking them from side channel attacks. The interface controller supports familiar industry standard bus protocols, eliminating the need to learn a proprietary interface. Finally, a third party vulnerability risk assessment of Puff RT concluded that there is only a low probability of success for attackers to find and exploit any weaknesses. Now it is time to wrap up today's webinar. First, we will share a list of reasons why Puff Security should be your security IP partner of choice. A Puff-based solution does away with the external key injection process, saving on the costs associated with traditional key provisioning. Anti-tampering features protect the IP as well as extend protection to cover the system from attacks and hacking. Puff Security aims to offer the easiest design and security IP solutions, covering your needs from basic to complex. In addition, the design kits for each IP are all very comprehensive, including firmware, software, FPGA emulation models, full documentation, reference scripts, and example logic modules, all standard. Puff Security's crypto engines have passed NIST's CIVP certification, and PuffRT has passed a third party's vulnerability assessment. As a wholly owned subsidiary of eMemory, Puff Security leverages the long standing relationships eMemory has developed over the 20 plus years it has been in the IP business, meaning Puff Security IPs are already pre qualified in all major foundries worldwide in a large variety of process nodes. Moving on to the last slides of the day, we will conclude today's presentation with an introduction to our IPGO program. IPGO is a free way to try out Puff IoT and other solutions in your own simulation emulation setup. Please visit the website listed here for all the details and instructions on how to get started with IPGO. Thank you for your time today. This concludes the presentation portion of the webinar. Now we will use our remaining time to answer the questions we have received, as time allows. Hi everyone, this is Lawrence. I'm the speaker for today, and I would like to thank you first for taking time out of your busy day to, to join me for the webinar. And so now's the time, if you have any questions, to feel free and, and message me. Uh, your, I believe your microphones are all muted, so just send me any messages for questions that you might have. 
uh, have about 10 minutes time for questions. Okay, uh, so here's, here's one question. I, I've got one question. It, the question is, regarding your IPO program, am I to understand that there is no catch? Uh, that is, I do not need to sign a non-disclosure agreement or pay a small usage fee to try out your designs. And the answer is yes, that, that is absolutely correct. There's, there's only a short application form to fill out and wait for approval. It is just a, it's pretty much everyone's approved. Uh, and then you go to the website and get started, the IPGO website. Let's see here. Uh, here's a question from, it says, can you please explain how the puff are fabricated? Let's see. Uh, don't want to get into anything confidential. I can, I can say that the puff is fabricated from the same technology that the OTP, anti-fuse OTP are fabricated from. So basically if the the OTP, the, the e-memory OTP, if it's qualified, if it's pre-qualified at a fab, then the puff is that carries over the qualifications. So that was the question about how the puff is fabricated. You're welcome. And let's see here. Uh, question is uh, how to get the recorded session. The, the session will be cleaned up and put onto YouTube. So as we should be able, you should uh, keep an eye out for the, on the, the e-memory channel for, for the YouTube link later. On the e oh, it's also it'll be on the e-memory website. It'll be posted on the e-memory website. And uh, next question is how can you demonstrate the stability of puff key? Is there any probability that the inborn puff key will change with lifetime or aging? So the the puff key has uh, we've taken silicon data from many different fabs and process nodes to to check for stability and pretty much, there's actually a, an ISSCC, ISSCC paper from 2018, you can, you can look it up. It, it also introduces the puff. It talks about pretty much there's, there's very little aging effects for this puff because it's based on uh, anti-fuse technology instead of SRAM puff. Uh, it's the... Next question. Oh, so uh, just uh, real quick, uh, the lifetime for the puff is is intended to be at least ten years uh, for same as the lifetime for a uh, the 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 OTP fuses. So the next question was, do you need calibration for puff? There's if you if you're talking in terms of. Uh, uh, let's see, like to tweak the process. There's, there's no need for process tweaking. It's, it's as long as the, uh, again, as long as the e-memory OTP is qualified on a process node, say, you know, say TSMC 22 nanometer, then the puff will be qualified as well. There's, there's no need for any extra steps or anything. Uh, next question, does the crypto function in Puff IoT have countermeasures against DPA uh, fault injection? And is there any certificate that can prove it? So yes, the crypto functions. Uh, uh, yes, the, the, there's a different configurations of Puff IoT. So if you select the Puff IoT with uh, hardened 
crypto engines, then yes, there are countermeasures against power analysis and fault injection attacks. Uh, certification, we are currently in the process of getting the physical penetration testing done. So right now I can't say I can show you the certificate, but uh, right now I can't show you the certificate, but it's, it's in the process. We're in the process of obtaining it. Oh, for the next question, the, for the Puff TRNG, is it compliant to BSI's AIS 31 slash 20? I, uh, to be honest, I'm not familiar with that one. I can go back and ask the designer himself um, about this standard. So I will have to get back to you on that question. Uh, sorry, I can't answer it right now. In the presentation, the subject of anti-tampering features was mentioned a lot. Can you go into more details about the exact types of features that you have in your design? Um, okay, that's, that's a good question, but because of confidentiality and time constraints, I cannot go into that much detail about the exact anti-tamper features that we have in our design. But if you get in contact with either an e-memory or Puff security sales rep, we would be glad to set up a discovery meeting where we can discuss those features and more at a, uh, at a leisurely pace. Thanks for that question too. Uh, one last question. The, you have a slide showing how your design works on a RISC-V platform. How does your design integrate with a different platform like ARM? And I'm, uh, the answer to that is that many of our customers actually do use the ARM-based platform. So our designs have already been integrated to work with their systems, um, including interfacing with the ARM's crypto cell security IPs. So thanks again for that question. So that's about all the time I have for today. Thanks again for your time. Thanks for your questions. And uh, hope to see you guys at the next webinar. All right. Um, have a great day. Thanks.